Hello everybody, how are you doing? My name is Roman Pletka. I'm a senior research scientist at IBM Research. We have been doing some really exciting research work here at the IBM Research Lab in Zurich on ransomware detection for storage systems. And I'm very proud to present you what we have achieved and what we are releasing for the IBM Flash system products using the IBM Flash core modules. Here on this overview, I'm showing you an IBM Flash system or Flash array in the middle. On the bottom, we can see several Flash core modules where we added a new computational storage function that is capable of extracting feature information from every I.O. operation that is being sent to the Flash core modules. This functionality is all built fully into hardware, such that there is no delay on host I.O. operations. The Flash core module then summarizes all this gathered information for each volume. It can actually extract feature vectors from them. The feature vectors are then collected by the feature aggregation module in the higher level stack every few seconds. The feature aggregation module combines them into a single feature vector per volume that can be used to run inference on it using a supervised machine learning model. The machine learning model that we deploy inside the flash system is a model that we trained outside the flash system and we are using a large amount of different traces we collected on real systems here in our lab and at various locations in IBM worldwide. These traces are from different workload types and different file systems and setups and also include traces from real ransomware samples that we were executing in an isolated environment. The models we train are all based on decision tree ensembles. In case the inference engine detects a ransomware behavior from the feature information, it will rise an alert sent to the storage insights automatically. Next, I would like to show you a real demo where we run real ransomware in a VM that is being executed on top of a KVM hypervisor in a host attached to the flash system. Okay, this is my flash system GUI and on this particular flash system I've already provisioned a few volumes. You can see them here and these volumes, they are associated to hosts. I have two hosts on this system. The host 1, ZAG07, is the one that we use for this demo and the VDISC4 ransomware detection demo is the one that is going to be used for this particular test run. It is a one terabyte volume. And now let's switch to the host where we will run the VM in our KVM environment. We can see the storage that has been provisioned here. It appears here as a mapper mpath HH and it has several NTFS partitions. Uh, these NTFS partitions are the actual Windows installation that I have prepared and this Windows installation I'm running this in a virtual machine let's gonna show that here so it's the last here in the list so it's already running you see it and yeah it's quite low CPU it's just running fine if we switch to the GUI of this VM we can see that I have put a lot of data files already it has HTML files, text files, PDF files, uh, uh, and a lot more. And those files are going to be attacked by uh, ransomware samples. Let's look at one of these files. So this text file is actually uh, some Python code that is being used. And uh, there's another file, for example, this PowerPoint presentation that is here. Yeah, let's have a quick look at it here. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So these files are now going to be attacked by our ransomware. I have this ransomware sample ready here on my desktop, but uh, before I'm going to really execute it, I would like to show you another GUI. And this GUI is essentially the data that we extract from the inference engine. So in this upper graph here, it's the prediction graph. 
uh, it shows a value between 0 and 1. So when it is at 0, it didn't detect the ransom method and everything is just OK. But if the value goes up to 1, then the system is detecting a ransomware activity. And uh, on the lower graph here, we have the confidence of the prediction uh, that we did when we did a ransomware. Uh, here on the next graph, we have also the inference time, so how long it actually takes to run inference for a thousand volumes. And you can see it's less than 10 milliseconds, and that is pretty fast. Now let's go back to our VM. Okay, that's here. And uh, we go to this ransomware file that we have, and we are just going to execute it. Okay, select it and we run it. Uh, here we go. So the ransomware is running. We see it that the CPU consumption is going up on the VM and uh, switching back to the VM. We already see that there is a ransomware notice, a warning, warning file. Let's go have a quick look and what it's in there, and oh, here is all the information to get back your data, oh, so the Bitcoin address where you have to pay Bitcoin and so on, but that's not what we want to do here, right? You're not going to pay Bitcoins. Here are some artifacts because these files are being encrypted and renamed. The editor already has some issues with handling those files. Let's just close it. Close this as well. Okay, yeah, and we see that it started uh, encrypting all these files. So these files have now uh, an extension called dot locked. And if we open the file that we were previously looking at, uh, the editor already has an issue with opening it. And yeah, that's what it is. All the data has been encrypted. It's no longer readable anymore, unfortunately. At this point, let's quickly have a look what is still ongoing here. There is heavy disk activity going on. So uh, the ransomware is reading data and encrypting it and writing it back to disk. So uh, let's go and switch now to the inference result that we, uh, I was showing you before. And indeed, we see that it already detected the ransomware very quickly. So the signal went up from 0 to 1. And we also see below that the confidence went up for this particular detection. And if we go down and look on how long this uh, inference took, it's just the same, right? Irrespective whether there is ransomware or not, it's just taking less than 10 milliseconds to run any inference for the thousand volumes. Now, this flash system is also attached to Storage Insights. To see that, we have to go to the notifications. Okay, that's kind of the notification email that has been triggered. So we go to Alerts, Actions, View, Alerts. And here we see the anomaly workload event that had been triggered. Everything has been detected as we wanted to have it. And I think let's go and switch back now to the VM. It's of no use anymore. Uh, so I just want to shut it down now. Shut down the VM. And once the VM is turned off, we are going to try to restore from an existing snapshot. So yeah, OK. The VM is down. And uh, we can go into our flash system GUI. We look for the snapshot that we had initially created on this particular volume. Local snapshots. And we select that particular snapshot. We do a restore on it. We have to select the correct subset of volumes. Here it is. So that's for VDisk 4, exactly. Restore. And we also have to type the name of that volume to be sure that we really want to restore this particular snapshot to this volume. And let's go. 
okay oh that was pretty fast okay the volume is back again and it's still attached to the same host of course and looks fine from the GUI here so let's switch to our host and uh, let's start this VM again the VM is starting now we start the virt viewer to get the GUI of the VM yeah there's some CPU activity already and it takes some time until the virt viewer comes up here it pops up okay let's gonna go full screen and uh, log into this VM and uh, let's check whether the data that had been encrypted has been correctly restored so we are back in the VM opening this PC the data is located in our documents folder let's gonna open this one data yeah this one here and here we have the files well they don't have the, the not locked uh, extension anymore and if we open it yeah okay we can even open it with the other editor notepad here we go okay and that's the source code that we were looking at before so everything looks fine and let's quickly have a look at the powerpoint presentation that we initially looked at uh, here it is okay open it and also yeah this uh, powerpoint presentation has been correctly restored as all the other files thanks for watching if you are interested in knowing more please head to our website www.ibm.com slash flash system or reach out to your business partner who will be happy to show you more. Thank you very much and have a nice day.